This is Walter Weese's GFA Hopper. GFA stands for General Foam Attractor. It's one of my favorite hopper attractor indicator patterns because it's extremely easy to tie and just seems to do everything well. For a hook, I'm going to use a Dairiki number 280 in size 10, but you can tie the GFA from as small as a size 14 all the way up to a size 6. Start by mashing the barb and getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. For thread, I've loaded a bobbin with a spool of tan UTC 140 denier. Get your thread started on the hook shank, leaving a small space behind the eye. After taking a few wraps rearward, snip the excess tag end off close. Departing from Walter's original recipe, I'll pull three or four strung peacock curls free from the rest and then snip their brittle tips off square. Secure the tips to the top of the hook shank and bind them down with wraps of tying thread. Go all the way back to halfway between the hook point and the barb. Leave your tying thread there and begin taking wraps behind it with the peacock curl. The thread should help the hurls stay together as you wrap. I like peacock for the underbody, mainly because with the addition of super glue, it keeps the foam body from rolling around the shank. It also adds a bit of iridescence to the underside of the fly. Just before reaching the hook eye, secure the hurl with a few turns of tying thread and then snip the excess butt ends off close. Two millimeter thick craft foam is used to create the body of the fly. I have a selection of foam cutters from River Road Creations that do a remarkable job of cutting foam to shape. All you need to do is press down with the cutter while the foam is resting on a special mat. You can cut hundreds if not thousands of bodies before the cutter blade dulls. I like to keep an inventory of bodies in a variety of sizes and colors. I also keep some brightly colored strips, about half a body in width, to use as hot spot indicators on top of foam flies. If you don't have cutters, simply cut strips just slightly larger than a hook gap in width. A paper cutter I got in an office supply store works especially well for this and is a good investment if you often tie with foam. Curved blade scissors do a nice job when it comes to shaping the foam, as do curved blade nail clippers. For this GFA hopper, I'm going to go with a body produced using the specialized cutter. With approximately a hook gap length extending beyond the bend of the hook, lay the foam on top of the shank. Pinch the foam as you take thread wraps to secure it immediately behind the hook eye. Once the foam secured, reach for the super glue. Here, fly tire z -Met. Apply a thin coat to the top of the peacock curl underbody. Then, pull the foam rearward and pinch it around the peacock. Use your tying thread to create a segment in the foam just shy of a third of a hook shank in length. Then, use your thread to produce two more short segments so the back edge of the second segment is approximately in line with the hook point. Take cross wraps over top of the two smaller segments as you work your tying thread forward. End with your thread at the back end of the first larger segment. Tied in like this, the body will not readily rotate or twist around the hook shank. For the fly's wing, I'm going to use bleached elk hair that's about an inch and a quarter in length. Snip a small clump free from the hide and strip out any short hairs and under fur. Place the clump tips first into a stacker and give it a good stacking. Separate the stacker so you can grip the hair tips with your left hand and then pass the butt ends to your right. This will allow you to measure out a wing that extends just short of the back edge of the foam body. Keeping this measurement, grip the clump with the fingertips of your left hand and using the back edge of the front foam segment as a guide, snip the excess butt ends of the elk hair off square. Try not to move the hair from this position. Give your bobbin a healthy counterclockwise spin so when you take your first thread wrap, it will grab the very butt ends of the elk hair. Pull down firmly with your tying thread and then take another couple of wraps to anchor the hair. Once again, reach for the Z-Ment or super glue, and this time, pick up only a small amount. Dab the adhesive on top of the front foam segment, then while pulling the elk hair rearward, Fold the foam that's in front of the hook eye back and pin it down. Use a few wraps of tying thread to hold it in position, then snip the excess off to leave a little tab sticking up behind your tying thread. 
To make the fly more visible, use a brightly colored piece of scrap foam or narrow strip. Lay the strip on top of the fly's foam head and bind it down with two or three turns of tying thread. Then, snip the excess off close to create a very visible little hot spot. A variety of materials can be used for the fly's legs. Here, I'm going to go with medium-sized striped round rubber legs. A single segment snipped in half is enough to make four legs. Lay both strands against the near side of the hook and take two thread wraps to lightly secure them. Pull the top strand up and over to the other side of the foam body so the legs are mirror imaged on either side of the fly. Take another single wrap of tying thread to anchor the legs, then pull them back and relocate your tying thread to behind the hook eye. Once again, pull the front legs rearward, then complete a five or six turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. At this point, it's a good idea to check the rubber legs for length. I like the front legs to be about a full hook in length and the back ones to be slightly longer. You can fish the fly as is, but I found it really benefits from a bit of adhesive. Rotate or turn the fly upside down in your tying vise. Head cement, or here, Sally Hansen hard as nails, works well. Apply a drop or two to the wraps binding down the legs and another smaller drop to the wraps behind the eye. This little bit of adhesive will substantially increase the fly's durability. By using different colors of foam, leg material, and tying thread, the GFA hopper can be tied in a nearly infinite number of variations. Use your imagination.